Hello everyone and welcome back to Warframe. Yes, I'm playing Warframe again. Uh, it is the game I was playing over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I just needed a break from, from every other game. I was just, I wanted to chill, hang out and uh, yeah, just have a good time. Which is exactly what I had in Warframe. Um, to no big surprise, I guess. But uh, yeah, this game always is fun to come back to. And I really do enjoy my time <laughs> spent in it. So yeah, today we are taking a look at Nova because uh, I don't think most of you know, but Nova is actually one of my absolute favorite Warframes. And uh, I always come back to her from time to time to play around and uh, just change up the builds and see what I can come up with. And yeah, today is no different. Uh, I finally achieved a steel path build that is fun for me to use, that also does not die every few seconds, although can't promise anything. Let's make use of a rolling guard. Uh, yeah, I'm still testing around with the defensive mods. So far there are no Archon shards installed. I would like to farm up a couple more of those and uh, maybe get some duration out of it. So we are able to drop one of the duration mods. That could be a lot of fun actually, because that would open up space for like a secondary survival mod or just something else in general. And yeah, this build does make full utilization of the 75% slow that we can achieve on Nova. And uh, I'm also running around with the Sea-Doo finally. Uh, so I also took time to gather up some rep in the open worlds and the, um, how's it called, the chrysalith, like the Saruman, there we go. And I was just focused on getting that content to a point where I'm also really, really happy. Uh, basically, I just really wanted the inner them to pop up, um, <laughs> which I leveled. I also went ahead and finally leveled the Layton actually went for a full build on that one quite the expensive thing to do because it is a seven forma build but that was definitely worth it like wow is that gun amazing now i have been running around with the latum with this nova build as well and it was super easy mode but then i thought like do you know what not everybody wants to do that investment and i need to find an alternative for a weapon that is also fun to use and has a little bit less of a forma intensive build. So yeah, I came across the Sea-Doo and I was like, oh my god, I never knew how good this gun actually is. <laughs> like you don't need to slow in damage buff from Nova's 4. Uh, I was running around with Neja and it didn't look much different. So that is definitely a, a huge positive for the gun. And as I said, the build is not too extensive. I'm running on one format at the moment. It is actually a two format build though, keep that in mind. Um, I have not maxed two of the galvanized mods yet. And I'm also not using a Exilus mod on the Cedar right now, because I just, I don't think I really need one. Like I never had ammo problems. I think the recoil is quite manageable, nothing too major there. So I never saw the reason to go into an Exilus mod. But uh, yeah, maybe in the future, I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely a gun that I uh, happily invest more four month stuff into it if I need to. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is sadly Draco survival because my usual place, Selkie on Setna, is occupied by the Corpus and I really wanted to show this off against Grenier. Because the one problem that Nova always had for me in Steel Path is she does not have any form of armor strip, right? So we incorporated Ember's ability to do that. Yes, that does cap out at 75% armor strip, but you can always cast it a second time if you really need to. And also 75% is more than enough for the Acolytes, to be honest. That was absolutely no problem. One thing I will say though, the Extremis units really can mess you up. Oh, right on cue. 
right on cue. <laughs> we will have a visit from Misery. Okay. Let's try it without using armor stripping, but just fire and yeah, you can see it, the C2 is not not that bad, right? That was pretty decent. Also, I need to be sure to pick up some life support. Let's fill up on that. But yeah, the, the C2 is absolutely amazing. Like, oh boy, oh boy. I will say though, um, without the arcane, I don't think you will get such good results um, because the arcane does make a huge difference so keep that in mind but we will talk about the builds as well as the arcanes and everything that I'm using on this after I don't know let's go for 10 minutes in the survival I think that's a fair point to go towards and with that we will get a second acolyte that we can uh, armor strip as well and see just how much 75% armor strip actually does against the Acolytes. Oh boy. A few rolling guard first, but yeah. The Eximus units are extremely dangerous. Like, honestly, you need to be quite on your toes at all times. Which is fine by me. I have absolutely no problems with that. Uh, does that mean I will die sometimes, occasionally? Yeah, absolutely, just because I didn't pay enough attention. Does it bother me? Not at all. It happens. It's okay. Ah, there he is. I was like, <laughs> somewhere is an Eximus unit that I'm not seeing. I don't have a rolling guard yet. There we go. We'll have it after this one. Okay. And, yeah. Obviously, we are using some good weaponry alongside Noah here, right? That is uh, a make or break, of course. As I said, the Latum is actually insane with her, uh, especially when you activate the Incarnate form and just go absolutely ham sandwich on the enemies. Which is fun as well, but as I said, I'm not expecting... A lot of people going that extra distance of a 7 forma build. It is extensive and it costed every single forma that I had lying around. So I struggled to get the one forma for the sea dude together. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's quite okay. Like I'm more than willing to farm up more formas and stuff. I just lacked in relic openings in general. Which are uh, it's okay, like, as I said, I... Or no, I didn't say it actually, but yeah, I, I play Warframe very, very casually lately. Like, it's been for a while this, like this, it's just, it's so much fun to jump in and play a little bit and then just do something else, right? But it's definitely still absolutely one of my all-time favorite games to play. Waited with Rolling Guard, because now we have a slash proc on us. <laughs> and yeah, we are using Magus Elevate on our operator to heal ourselves back up. In case that was not mentioned yet, which I think I didn't. But as you can see, whoa, those, those heat procs are no fun at all. Make sure we heal up from those. There we go. And also, this Nova build reaches 90% damage reduction on her one, which is something that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Now, could we stack this up with adaptation as well? Yes, we could. And that is probably the defensive mod that I would add if I add some Archon shards with ability duration. That is the route that I see myself going. Uh, just to bolster up, honestly, um, because we are quite squishy, right? We don't have much armor on Nova, so every little bit that can help is uh, definitely greatly appreciated. Torment is actually known 
to make some issues for me. Did you get the armor strip off? I don't think so. Let's do it again. But as you can see, we have 75% armor strip. Acolytes are actually just dying really, really quickly. Um, but yeah, I guess we will extract and talk about the builds. What I have done to achieve 90% DR, how we managed to get the armor strip on, which is easy. It's just a helminth of ember, as I said. But uh, yeah, let's extract. There we go. Finally, finally a build for Nova that can do steel puff uh, quite comfortably, right? Um, yeah, it's like half of the kills that I do get with like a Mesa or uh, other frames where I really focus on killing fast, but this is not about killing fast, right? This build is to be just to have fun <laughs> and be safe while doing it more or less safe, of course. All right, let's jump into the Nova build. So this is quite the form intensive build. Uh, may, mainly because I have other builds on her, right? There we go. Speed Nova is the problem, right? If I would just use a Aura Forma, which at the time I was playing around with Nova a lot, that was not a thing. Um, so this is why we just use Rose's Projection here, because it fits the Aura slot and also it does help us out, right? We use Intensify and Power Drift to get 145 strength. This is pretty normal, and that gives you the 75% slow. And the armor reduction on Ember 3, as you can see, is 75%. The radius is only 8.5 meters. So the other thing we could do once we patch up duration is add a little bit more range, just to support this a little bit more. Right, we are also using Rolling Guard, as you saw in the video, to get rid of status effects. Ground flow to bank a lot of energy because we are casting a lot. We use the molecular fission augment. Now this is just so whenever we kill an enemy that is affected by our four, we get two orbs back. Now there is an argument to be made. Uh, other people like to use neutron, not not neutron star. Wait, or is it? Yeah, it's this. It is neutron star because you can actually recast your stars, right? You blow them up and you can cast the ability again. But I just find it a lot more comfortable if I do not have to worry about my damage reduction and it just comes back every single time I do get kills if I lose some stars, that is. For duration to reach 306%, 300% is what we want to reach because that will give us 18 orbs, which equals to 90% damage reduction. We use Prime Continuity, Narrow-Minded Constitution, as well as Ogre Message for that. And uh, yeah, this is like one of these mods could be substituted out for either a streamline to get the cast slower once I have the Archon shards. But this is the build how it is, like very, very fun. Obviously in conjunction with Primed Flow, Arcane Energize is really, really good, as you can see, my mine is only on rank two, which isn't too bad for me. That is 75 energy. Really, really cool. Arcane Tempo is here because on crit, you have a 15% chance for 90% fire rate to shotguns. This is very nice to use on the Sea Dew, right? Speaking of the Sea Dew, this is the build I've went with. I use Galvanized Hell for multi shot and Galvanized Savvy for status chance and also stacking damage. We are using Primary Merciless for stacking damage on kill, right? So we want to keep this up as much as possible to get the most out of our gun. Critical Deceleration is here. Um, this is why I use the Arcane for fire rate as well, because we lose a little bit of fire rate here, but we gain 200% crit chance, which puts us comfortably at 60%. Excuse me. Very, very nice. Primed Ravage, uh, if you don't have this, just use normal Ravage, obviously, uh, but this gives us a 5x crit multi, very, very nice. We round it off with Frigid Blast and Toxic Barrage for some status chance and viral damage, and Scattering Inferno for heat damage, as well as even more status chance. And the last 
thing we use is the good old Hunter Munitions. 30% chance to apply a slash proc on crit. Very nice. Exilus wise, uh, possibilities could actually be galvanized acceleration. Um, I didn't I didn't think so far it's needed, but it could be something that I invest into. Could also go for vigilante supplies to get a little bit more ammo and also the set bonus to enhance crits from time to time could be something. Also, like shotgun ammo mutation, why not? If you really think you blow through ammo way, way too fast, right? For me, um, probably gonna be galvanized acceleration at some point just to test it out because the polar polarity actually fits, right? <laughs> but yeah, if you have galvanized hell and galvanized savvy on max rank, obviously the third former has to come in. And when I look at this, how it is right now, it would just be to add another V polarity to cut down one, one of these ones, either deceleration or hunter munitions. That would be the two former build then, right? That is pretty much it. Honestly, coming up with everything for this was so much fun. Uh, I didn't play with the Cedo before. I just went with my guts, came up with this build, and I think it worked out really, really well. And if you take a look at a normal slow build, it's basically the same, just we have vitality in here, because in the start chart, that's all you really need. Um, so yeah, but as I said, cutting out either Ogre Message or Constitution, absolutely amazing, and patch this up with Archon Shards. So yeah, that is it. I thought it would be nice to share this loadout with you, just so that you can get like a feel for what it is or how it is to play with Nova in the Steel Path, what you have to do or what you can do, what is my approach to it. And that's definitely all for today. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, take care. Bye.